another important secondary lymphoid organ is spleen spleen is the largest secondary lymphoid organ it's much bigger than the lymph nodes because lymph nodes are comparatively smaller in size but spleen is comparatively bigger and is situated high in the abdominal cavity here on the left part of the body there is a pancreas and just below the pancreas there is spleen spleen is mainly going to take care of the blood borne antigens all those pathogens bacteria which are going to infect the body through blood which are going to spend their more time in blood they all will be taken care in spleen the spleen is having more lymphocytes than all lymph nodes together so the number of lymphocytes which are going through spleen are much more than lymph nodes and other than that let's take a look of the spleen you can see this is the ls that is longitudinal section of spleen so suppose here there is a spleen and we will take a section like this and this is what part which we are going to observe is this and spleen is the only organ in our body which is not supplied with lymphatic vessels because this is the splenic artery and through it only antigens will enter and the antigens will go out through splenic vein that's it all the cells will enter through splenic artery and everything which will go out is through splenic vein that's the reason why spleen is not having lymphatic vessels now there are two main micro environments in spleen first is a red bulb and second is a white bulb and both of them are separated by marginal zone marginal zone is also represented by mz now what is actually it you can see this is the capsule region capsule the layer of fats which is present on all vital organs of our body just like spleen also and some part of the capsule is somewhere uh, uh, present internal to the organ and this is called trabeculae and because of this trabeculae the spleen is also divided into many lobes this is one lobe this is second lobe this is third lobe like this such many lobes are there there is a splenic artery and you can see the artery will branch into many arterioles and each artery will go in one lobe or one compartment of the spleen here it will branch into thousands and lakhs of capillaries and the pores in the capillaries in spleen are comparatively bigger as compared to rest of the other organs result of this is the old the damaged rbcs which are comparatively smaller in size as compared to the other rbcs will also come out in this area and that's why these branch regions which are also called vascular sinusoids or vascular sinuses the branch region of the uh, uh, capillaries where the pores uh, from the pores of the capillaries the rbcs will come out and these old defective rbcs will get spread in this area and that's why this outside area the cortex area of spleen is generally referred as red bulb but from the blood vessel itself the b lymphocytes t lymphocytes will also come out in this area they won't wait up to the sinusoids because the b and t lymphocytes are generally smaller in size the lymphocytes are always smaller cells and that's why these pores are sufficient in the arteriole are sufficient to take them out and that's why in this area you can see this area especially which is marked by this black color is actually called marginal zone and inside the marginal zone this peri arteriolar lymphoid sheet is there which is actually also called t cell zone and this t cell zone that is peri arteriolar lymphoid sheet has certain follicles in them the follicles are called b cell zone b cell and t cell are found inside this marginal zone and that's why this uh, marginal zone uh, the area inside the marginal zone is called white pulp and that also include peri arteriolar lymphoid sheath that is t cell 
as well as follicle that is B cell. And now maximum antigens which are also present in the blood they will also enter first in this area that is in the periarterial lymphoid sheath region that is inside the marginal zone. And that's why this area is a white pulp or white matter and outside it is a red matter or red pulp. Fibroblastic reticular network. This is a very important thing which is present in the spleen. And this fibroblastic reticular network is present throughout spleen. I have shown some part of it here. And you can see this fibroblastic reticular network is actually going to guide the T lymphocyte as well as B lymphocyte so that they should not escape anywhere here or there. They should follow proper path and that's why this network is formed by fibroblastic reticular network that provide tracks for T and B cell migration. Now the narrow B lymphocyte will also enter through the splenic artery and where it will go? It will go in this area. The TH as well as TC they will also enter in this area. And now the older RBCs which are present in this area are engulfed by macrophages or sometimes dendritic cells, mostly macrophages and they are destroyed. And thus this red pulp might be consist of many dead RBCs and some macrophages which might have engulfed the uh, uh, older RBCs. And at the same time, in this area, the antigen will be encountered by B lymphocyte. But generally, the B lymphocyte will carry that antigen after encountering the follicle region. Again, it might be primary follicle, which is immature, or it might be secondary follicle, which is mature. And other than that, the TH and TC lymphocytes they will meet the dendritic cells that is dendritic cells are also APCs in the PALS that is periarterial lymphoid sheath region and now you can see this marginal zone this region is rich in dendritic cells macrophages and unique B cells means there are actually three macro environments red pulp inside the marginal zone white pulp and the marginal zone itself because marginal zone itself consists of dendritic cells macrophages and some unique b cells why unique b cells because most of the b cells are present in the follicle that's why it is called b cell zone but some unique b cells are present in the marginal zone because they have tlr that is tall like receptors as well as B cell receptor that is antibodies are also present on their surface and that's why through that they will engulf and they will destroy the antigen as well as here in the B cell zone of course the B lymphocyte through their antibodies on their surface will recognize the antigen again they will take it inside destroy it process it and after processing one of the complex protein present on the bacterial surface will be presented in the group of MHC class 2. Why MHC class 2? Because B lymphocytes are also APCs. At the same time, when this is taking place inside the follicle, in the marginal zone, this black region, there are dendritic cells and they are also acting as APC and they are presenting it to TH and TC lymphocytes, no doubt in the group of MHC class 2 to TH lymphocyte and in the group of MHC class 1 to TC lymphocytes and here their education is also taking place. This TH will release cytokines because of that the B lymphocytes, B lymphocytes present in the marginal zone as well as in the follicle both will get activated and they will start proliferation. At the same time TC lymphocytes will also get activated because of the cytokines of TH lymphocyte and they will also start proliferation. At the same time, TH themselves through autocrine signaling because the cytokines released by them will act on themselves also and they will also start dividing. In this way, memory and effector, effector cells are also called plasma cells. Two types of cells will be formed. Memory cells will remain silent during this primary infection. But 
if the same bacteria will affect again or attack again definitely they will the memory cells will respond but the th and tc will also form memory cells and they will also respond during second infection by the same type of bacteria but what about the effector and plasma cells the plasma b cells will start synthesizing antibodies and these antibodies they will go and bind to the antigen and then it will be opsonized by macrophages or dendritic cells this is what is the main story in it so this is how the blood borne infections or blood borne pathogens are taken care and the body will get rid of the blood borne bacteria or infections through spleen because of spleen but spleen not only kills bacteria it also is going to filter the blood reason is very simple that these spleen is going to have bigger pores in their capillaries and that's why older rbcs are destroyed and that's why bone marrow will be stimulated to synthesize new rbcs so in this way older rbcs are replaced with new other than that the spleen is also having important role in iron metabolism reason when rbcs are destroyed the hemoglobin will also broken and the heme part in the hemoglobin contain iron and this iron is again reabsorbed into the blood then it will also have a role in platelet storage yes inside the spleen platelets can also be stored to some extent and other than that no doubt hematopoiesis also takes place in spleen to a very small extent because certain hematopoietic stem cells are present in the spleen also but at the time of infection when body require more wbcs at that time the spleen will also get stimulated to synthesize more amount of wbcs and hematopoiesis takes place at a faster rate in spleen in infections now other than that if splenectomy will take place splenectomy means removal of spleen then in such cases all blood borne infections can uh, easily infect the body like streptococcus pneumoniae which will cause pneumonia they uh, neisseria meningitis this will cause meningitis and hemophilus influenza these are these are the germs which are actually main go, uh, mainly going to spend their much more time in the blood and that's why as spleen is removed nobody will take care of the body so what do you have the splenic arteries their branches and splenic vein and thus they will uh, these components which will enter in the spleen will again go back through splenic vein so they don't have lymphatic system like the other organs in our body most of the memory cells for in spleen will remain inside the spleen only and whenever the same type of blood borne antigen will come in the body or attack the body the same memory cells will come out and will show their action this is all about the spleen as secondary lymphoid organ thank you